Everyone knows by now that EV batteries last ages, but if you want to find out the battery health of your EV, how do you do it? Or let's say you're going on a long journey and your in-car sat-nav is terrible and it doesn't plan charging stops for you. Well, maybe you want a solution for that as well. There's one thing that you can get that helps with both of these and it's called an OBD dongle. It looks like this and I'm going to tell you how to use it. If you like this video, please do press the subscribe button. I'm sick of doing websites. I design websites for a living and frankly, I'm sick of it. So if you could press that subscribe button and the bell icon, that would really help me out. I'd love to do this full time. So this OBD dongle, the one I've got in this box is called the VGate iCar Pro. So before we even get to the dongle, what the hell is an OBD port? It's a really good thing that all cars have, some are hidden more than others and it enables mechanics for instance to get diagnostics and things like that about your car and if you're geeky enough to actually have one yourself like I have it enables me to do the same thing as well and find out some information so a dongle is obviously something that plugs inside that port it's a bluetooth dongle so it enables us to connect it up to the phone and we use an app on our phone to get the information we want so before we do anything else let's find the OBD port in this eNero that I'm in at the moment see down here it says fuse obd if i take that cover off you can see that there if you're old like me you might remember the scart port on tvs and video recorders things like that it looks very similar to that so here's the box let's get it open and see what's inside so this is something you can get from amazon and yes i do have a referral link uh, that you can click on and i do get a few pence every time someone orders one of these so thank you if you do uh, right, okay, so obviously I'm doing this one-handed, which is not ideal. Uh, okay, let's screw that. If we open that, there you can see the iCar Pro. And there it is. So we just have to plug that into the OBD port. Some beautiful lights appearing there. So once that's plugged in and the car is on, and make sure it's properly turned on, foot on the brake, press the on button, if you have to do that in your car. Um, then you can download an app and it, the little instruction book does come with a QR code and you can download an app from that. But Car Scanner is the one I use and it's really good. So if you go to your app store, whether that's on Apple or Android, go to the app store, go to Car Scanner. And then once you've got that, you can connect it to the OBD port. And then once you do that, uh, make sure you select the correct profile of car and um, and then it's as simple as that really and then you can click around and you can see all the juicy information so if you go to all sensors and then scroll all the way down you can see there's loads of stuff including state of health and this is reporting a state of health of 100 percent for this kia e Nero that i've got here with 51,000 miles on the clock and it's a 2021 so it's not 100 percent because there is a bit of a buffer at the top of all batteries have it um, a bit of a buffer at the top and that buffer gets eaten into there's a big bit at the bottom that's the usable battery the bit at the top is a buffer um, that top bit gets eaten into the usable bit is generally fine for ages and ages and ages the batteries last a long long time in evs because they're so well managed they don't let it get too hot so the state of health in this e Nero is still 100 percent. it was 100 percent when i got it and it's 100 percent now it's not exactly 100 percent um and there are, although this OBD port thing is great, um, I think there are more accurate ways of getting that information. For instance, when I had the eNero serviced recently, they um, plugged in their device and they got 98% state of health. So it's not an exact science, but still, even if it's just 98%, that's pretty good, really. If I plug it into the Nissan Leaf that I've got, um, that's uh, much less than 100%. That's an older car with pretty awful, awful battery management. So that's kind of to be expected. Leafs are notoriously poor for battery management. But that brings me on to the Leaf actually because the Leaf, you can get even more information. In fact, if you download something called Leaf Spy, but Leaf Spy is a bit touchy with what OBD dongle it likes. So I have a separate OBD dongle just for the Leaf and that's called Ellie Link. So follow my referral link if you want that one, if you have a Leaf really good information including if a battery cell uh, is dodgy on it so I've actually used this with a neighbor who bought a leaf and the battery was not very good but that's going to be in another episode so stay tuned for that but anyway 
if you get a leaf get leafs by app and get ellie link dongle otherwise use the dongle that i've recommended here this vgate one or get any other one point is use car scanner and you've got loads of information you can play on that for ages the other reason that car scanner is really good is because you can find out the battery temperature batteries like to be quite hot 25 degrees not hot but warm certainly to get the faster charging speeds if they're cold they don't charge as quickly so it's really good for finding out information like that as well okay so that's the car scanner stuff I only wanted to breeze through it pretty quickly um, but you just download it and have a play now as I said it's good for battery health and it's also good for route planning with something called a better route planner let me just show you what the route planning is like in the Kia e-Nero admittedly there is a software update which I haven't done yet that'll be another video but there is a software update that might improve it a bit but I don't think it will on this old model so let's just see what a lot of EVs out there are like with route planning let's say we want to drive to I always use this example let's say we want to drive to Edinburgh in Scotland from Canterbury that's a pretty long stretch and no EV battery can do that in one go yet close but not yet and the e-Nero certainly can't so there we go let's have a look Edinburgh yes thank you very much Edinburgh yep start guidance Battery charge is insufficient to reach destination. Visit a charging station along the route. But okay, well, that's great. So we can go to OK, and then that's really not going to be any good. Or we can go to Search Station. If I click on Search Station, so this is pretty useless, really, because I don't know. I don't know which one I should go for. I mean, also, it shouldn't show me any AC ones because you don't want an AC charger when you're driving along because they're ridiculously slow. So, you know, which one would I go for? And I don't want to be too hard on it, it's an old car, but this is what the navigation looks like in the Leaf, so that's why you might want to use something like a better route planner instead. I'm not even going to show you how to use this, because I, oh God, it's just awful. It's awful, but you know, it's old, it's old technology. It's not even a proper touch screeny thing. It's like an old Tom Tom back in the day. So anyway, yeah, it's, evil anyway yes so that's why you don't want to use that and you would probably much rather use one of these so that's the frustrating experience in a lot of evs and i've always said this but teslas you don't have this and polestar volvo renault megane they're all brilliant uh even volkswagens in fact have pretty good route planning these days with charging stops the point is if you have an older ev then you might want to get a better route planner. Download a better route planner, ABRP, from the App Store or Google Play. And once you have that, we're going to connect it up to the dongle using something called Live Data. And once we've connected the dongle and we get Live Data, that means a better route planner now knows what battery percentage you've got. And that's key, because when it knows what your battery percentage is, it can work out how good your efficiency is while you're driving and it can adjust the plan based on that so let's say you're driving like you stole it and you're not getting quite the same efficiency that a better route planner think you should then it will adjust accordingly and it will perhaps tell you to charge a little bit sooner so that's all really good well it's good in theory it's good that it's good when it works a better route planner isn't perfect but you know it's better than having nothing at all uh, like we have in the e-Nero here. Okay, so let's set it up in the Nero. So once you've got the dongle plugged in, go to a better route planner. We're gonna to go to top left and I'm gonna click here. I've already added my car on here, but you can go to select a new car and you can add your own. And I'm gonna click on live data and I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna to go to OBD connection, this one here. So it gives you a little warning about security. Do read that, but I'm not going to go into that. And then click on your dongle, which should appear there. You saw that V-Link, that was mine. And then it says, press save to link this dongle to your vehicle. This might confuse you for a bit. There's a big blank space there. And you've got to scroll down to save. They must not have sorted this out for the new iPhone yet, I guess. But uh, yeah, go to save. It's going to give you that warning again, understood. Okay, so that is now linked up, and now it's starting to do something. Sometimes it takes a little time. So there we go, state of charge, 80%, and it gives you all this kind of juicy information. Degradation, 0%. That's right, that's right, folks. 0% for the Enero, even though it's uh, a 2021. 
So it'll give you all the kind of information. So that's all good. If you want to do a route, you can click that little button there and that's actually going to take the data from the dongle. That's what we want. So it's as easy as that. Now let's have a look in the leaf. So it's much the same story with the Nissan Leaf. The difference is you have to connect through an app called Leaf Spy. So if I just open up Leaf Spy now. So now that's open, we can go back to a better route planner. So once you have Leaf Spy open in the background, and that's really important, it's got to be open in the background, then it connects to that and uh, it tells you that the state of charge is 74% and uh, all this kind of other stuff. Leaf Spy has to be on in the background because there's lots of settings here that you have to enter. Oops, there we go. So down there, there's these server settings and you have to enter this. A better route planner tells you what to put in, but you have to enter this first on Leaf Spy. And then once that's in, it sends data to a better route planner. And then you can start uh, doing plans with the Leaf. To demonstrate this, I'm going to show you a route that I recently did in the leaf. I need to get back to Canterbury. I'm currently in a place called Ashurst Wood and I've got 72% battery and it says 55 miles on the range meter and then it's 66 miles to go back to Canterbury, a direct route. It knows it's 72% battery and let's get a plan and hopefully I've got one bar of 4G, hopefully it's gonna do it. Okay so six minutes at one and then 12 minutes at another. I heard a couple of rumbles of thunder and it's just gonna tip it down with rain just in time for me to plug in probably i'll get uh, struck by lightning while i'm plugging in the car which is a good way to go i think so a better route planner gives you loads of different options it's got settings for everything really and at the moment it's got fastest arrival time set what you can do is you can also set it to longer charges or shorter charges so at the moment it's kind of set in the middle setting but if I wanted to, I could do longer charges. And what that would do is it would change the plan. So it would probably recommend that I uh, go to this first charging stop and just charge there for longer to avoid having to go to the second one um, as well. So I could do that. But what I'm gonna do for the moment is just follow the plan exactly. I've got a little message on the screen saying view alternatives, there is a faster route. Um, so if I press that. That's saying to charge 31 minutes at a Shell recharge. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to charge at Shell. On the way here yesterday, I charged at Shell, or I tried, wanted to charge at Shell, and it was offline. Looks pretty broken, doesn't it? I just went in and asked about, asked about the charges to the guy in there, and he said they don't care. They've been offline for a week now. He, he called them again today. They should be sending someone, but they don't care. I don't know whether he means Shell or whether he means someone else like the people who have to maintain the charges I don't know but anyway Shell really are awful so I'm not going to give Shell any money at all even if it does work big bloody oil giant green washing bastards so this is um, a pub in a place called Pembury and this is an Osprey charger you get a lot of Osprey chargers at pubs and they always tend to be very reliable I think I've got to charge up to 69%, so I'll do that. So we want to Really great display, isn't it? Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I really love Osprey chargers. You know, whenever I see an Osprey charger, I think, yeah, that's going to work. You might be wondering why a better route planner is doing these two charges to get home instead of just going at one for a longer period. And it's really just because Electric car batteries, they slow down the closer they get to 100%. Usually it's about 80%. It starts to sl it starts to drop off a cliff, really. And um, that's true in the Leaf. So at the moment, it's 73% and I'm only getting 18 kilowatts of, uh, of power, which is really not very much at all. So if you want to get to a destination quickly, a better route planner, quite correctly, is saying it's actually better just to top up a little bit, just to get to the next charger and then top up some more. So ideally you want to get the battery as close down to zero. We don't want to get really close to zero. I would say 10% is kind of fine. Get it down to sort of 10%-ish and then you get the faster charging speed. So that's the clever way of doing it really. Obviously if you're doing something else, like I'm talking to you right now, then I don't care about sitting in the car and um, charging up. 
so uh, that's absolutely that's absolutely fine but ordinarily if you're in a rush you might want to just do little quick charges really and then get to the next one so that's what a better route planner suggests at least with the setting that I've got set okay, stop. so I've got 78 percent 59 miles 49 minutes to get to another Osprey charger in Ashford Okay, so we got here with 42% battery and 34 miles on the range meter. I think I could probably get back to Canterbury okay, you know, but anyway, it's, I'm going to charge here because that's what it tells me to do. So it thought I would have 48% battery and I've got 42, so Leaf Spy, at least for the Leaf, okay, this is only an issue with the Leaf, Leaf Spy has to be on in the background and I think when it's on in the background it's not sending the data. I think that's what's happening. But um, ordinarily with any other car, a better route planner with your OBD dongle will work fine, I think, and it will update it all the time. Okay, so. So I've reached 65%, which a better route planner said I should get to, and you'll see you get this lovely confetti effect when you get to the correct state of charge. So I'm gonna unplug now and then drive on. Um, I've got more than enough to get back home, I think, so it's all good. I got here with 43% and 31 miles, um, 32 now, I've turned off the air conditioning. So uh, 32 miles on the range and 43% battery, which is more than a better route planner thought. A better route planner is very good in many ways, but it's also kind of annoying in others. I think it wanted to take me up the motorway on the way back from the charger, and I ignored that because why would I go up to the motorway when there's a more direct route that's more efficient and doesn't really take any more time so I did the direct route and um, and so I think I've got more battery percentage than it thought and it means that I didn't have to charge I think at the previous place but anyway it's fine so um, what have we learned from this firstly get yourself a dongle um, the Ellie link one is specific really for the leaf because that works with leaf spy and you will need the app leaf spy if you want to look at all the diagnostics of the leaf you can do everything with leaf spy but you do need this particular dongle because it seems to be the one that works best with it for any other ev that isn't a leaf then um, use my link to download uh, what's it called vgate vgate pro is the dongle that i use for the enero and with that, you can link it directly with a better route planner. You don't need anything like Leaf Spy, you don't need another app, and you should find it's a bit more reliable in terms of getting the battery percentage. So given that it was a less than perfect experience with a better route planner, you might be wondering why you would use it in the first place. Really, it's just useful for the EVs that don't have decent charge planning. You can also use it in CarPlay, by the way. I don't have CarPlay with the Nissan Leaf um, CarPlay and Android Auto. To do that, you need to subscribe to a Better Route Planner Premium, which obviously costs a bit. You might want to use that, but just bear in mind that a Better Route Planner is not the best with navigation. So just bear that in mind. And I've always kind of considered it really good as a sort of a guide, um, but uh, don't perhaps take it as gospel. I hope you found this video interesting. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. Press like and even uh, join as a member. Um, if you do, then you get early access to videos and you get exclusive live streams, that kind of thing. So thank you very much if you do that. All right, we'll be back very soon. Bye for now.